morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so we're going to deal now with what makes a compound more acidic than another compound. So we're going to be discussing structural characteristics of acids more or less and uh, how we can determine if one compound is going to be more acidic than another. If you haven't enabled your video, make sure you do please. I haven't checked yet to see who has or who hasn't. We're dealing with uh, four specific effects here. First one has to do with electronegativity of, uh, of an element that hydrogen is actually attached to. Then we've got some inductive effects. Then these are kind of outside of where the, where the hydrogen is being removed from. And one has to do with the distance. Next one has to do with electronegativity of an attached element, which is a bit different from what we talked about earlier and number of electronegative elements attached to an acid. All right, so let's look at the, the, the basis of what we're going to talk about. First of all, an acid is a compound that produces H plus when dissolved in water. And I'm calling a base a compound that produces OH minus when dissolved in water. We'll be talking much more about bases later. If I'm talking about which compound is more acidic, then I'm looking for, at the one that produces more H+, which I think makes a great deal of sense. Now the thing that's going to underpin all of this, and this is what you won't understand immediately, and this is what we're going to focus on, will be that the compound that produces a more stable anion will produce more H+. Right, so that's what's going to, to drive everything that we're talking about here. So let's start out with the concept of electronegativity. And what you'll notice about this example is that the hydrogens that we're talking about, the ones that get released as H plus are actually attached to entirely different atoms. In the case of NH3, the H plus is attached to an N. In the case of CH4, the, case, the H plus is attached to a C and that's making a big difference here. Whenever we write an equation that shows something being acidic, we automatically write H plus because we're being asked about acidity. So the H plus is actually the acid part. To balance this, the NH2 is fairly obvious because we need that to balance for the atoms. But the other thing that's not so obvious is the fact that we're going to have a negative charge here. This negative charge though, is actually not on the H or anything else, it's on the N. So just giving you an idea of what's happening here when the ammonia 
does become the anion is because both electrons from that bond both electrons from that bond are going on to the n and meaning that the n is gaining an electron and thus a negative charge and the h is losing an electron and gaining a positive charge does anybody have any questions so far so this arrow here is representing the movement of these two electrons in this bond onto the nitrogen so if you drew the lewis dot structure for that it would look like this Okay, so when we're looking at both of these, we're comparing these two anions and their stabilities. Now, here's the thought behind what I was saying earlier. Go back to what I was saying. The compound that produces a more stable anion will produce more H+. So here's what I'm saying. Out of these, we're getting two anions. The NH3 is producing NH2 minus and the CH4 is producing CH3 minus. So here's the story. If NH2 minus is more stable than CH3 minus, which it is, and I'll tell, say why it is in a minute, then what's going to happen is when NH3 forms H plus, it will form also more NH2 minus. And that's because it's more stable than CH3 minus. So because the NH3 is forming more of the anion, it's also forming more of the H plus. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, so let's look at why the NH2 minus is more stable than the CH3 minus. The reason for that is because if we look at the periodic table, and I think I'm going to have to pull up a periodic table here so I can show you that. Uh, do I have one? I actually don't know if I have one here in this course. I should have, I just don't know. I probably let's, let's, let's look at one of the old tests, it'll be there. pull up one of those. Okay. So when we look at the periodic table, then this one is not really, well, maybe I'll have to download it to, to look at it a bit better. No, I don't know, maybe not. F is the most electronegative element. And we can tell which element is which element is more electronegative than another element by looking at how close it is to fluorine. So if we're comparing C and N, you can see that N is more electronegative than C because it's closer to F on the periodic table. So that's the that's the rationale that I'm using here. So NH2 minus is more stable because N is more electronegative than C. The reason for this, the deeper reason, is that because N is more electronegative, it brings the negative charge of the electrons in closer to the nucleus. And this has a stabilizing effect on the negative charge. So that's why the N handles the negative charge better than the C does. The third step here is to write a statement that links anion stability to acidity. So this outlines what I was talking about earlier. So my logic here is since NH2 minus is more stable than CH3 minus, and we figured out why it's more stable up here. Therefore, NH3 is more acidic than CH4. So it's important that the verbiage here is understood. The difference between anion stability and acidity needs to be very clear here. So in the first line, we're talking about and comparing the stability of the anions that have formed. In the bottom line here, we're actually answering the question, which is more acidic. So the NH2 minus and the CH3 minus are not acidic. 
they're, they're anions. They're not going to release H+. What's releasing H+, are the compounds that are forming NH2- and CH3-. Does anybody have any questions? So I just want to like recap the closest, the element that's closest to F is the one that's more stable because it has more electronegativity. When we're talking about anions, yes, Alexandra, the, the, the element that has a negative charge on it that's closest to fluorine is going to be more stable. Okay, so, and it's always you just take away an H plus Yes, because okay. when we talk about acidity, that's what acidity means. It means how much H plus is it producing. Okay. So that's why we're taking the H plus away in the first place. When we take that away, we obviously lose an H, but we also change that to a negative charge on the remaining part of it once we've taken the H plus off. Okay, thank you. All right. So this... This one is a little bit different from the other cases because the H is actually on a different atom. Here it's on an N, here it's on a C. And that's, that's, that's what I really want to point out here. In the next example, you can see they're both on O. So that's not the reason that one is more acidic than the other or more, or one has a more stable anion than the other. It's got nothing to do. It's got nothing to do with where the H is. So when we're looking at the, when we're looking at these, the, we do the same thing as we did previously. And we look at the removal of these hydrogens. Now the compounds here are actually what we call line structures. You may have seen these before, or you may not have. It depends. If you had me for Chem 1, you definitely would have seen them. But if not, then you wouldn't have. So what happens is that each of these points actually represents a carbon atom. And we know how many hydrogens there are is, is, is because we know that carbon has four bonds on it. So when you see these line structures, you've just got to see them as being C, CHs or CH3, CH2s, depending upon where you are. But what, what Matt, that doesn't really matter here. What matters is that the most acidic hydrogen out of any of these is always going to be the one on the O because the O is more electronegative than the C. So that's why I'm specifically taking off these hydrogens here. Not because they're the only ones that I've drawn in, but just because they're the more stable, they're going to result in the more stable anion when they're removed. Does anybody have any questions so far? So what I've done is I've labeled these as AH and I've labeled the anion I'm getting as A minus as BH and the anion I'm getting as B minus. So let's look at these anions that I've drawn here. And what I'm about to tell you tends to cause no end of trouble to students, and I'm not sure exactly why, but it's got to do with these partial charges, these delta pluses and delta minuses. If I was to look, take a good look at what's going on here with the delta pluses and delta minus, what I'm really seeing is C connected to F. The F is going to have a delta minus and the C is going to have a delta plus. What do these delta minuses and delta pluses mean? Well, hopefully you've seen this before when you've talked about bond polarity. And what we're dealing with here is the notion that these, this line here represents two electrons and that these two electrons are closer to an element on one side than they are to the element on the other. And all of this again stems from electronegativity. So in the CF bond, the electrons on average are closer to the F than they are to the C because F is more electronegative than C. Does anybody have any questions?
I know some of you are looking at this and you're saying, I've never seen this before in my life, but I think you probably have and you just don't remember it. Now, what I'm looking at here specifically is the distance between the delta plus and the O minus. When I've got a positive and a negative charge, that's a stabilizing effect. If I had two positive charges, that would be a destabilizing effect. But because we've got opposite charges, that helps stabilize the O negative. Likewise, over here, when I make the same comparison, you can see that the delta plus is much further away from the O minus, meaning that the effect is going to be a lot less on the stabilization. So what that tells us is that because the delta plus is closer to the O minus in this instance, then we know that this anion, the one I'm pointing to, the A minus is going to be more stable than B minus. I'm going to stop here for a second. Does anybody have any questions? Will like delta plus and delta minus always be on the products or are we going to have to figure where they go? You mean, will they be told to you? Yes. No, you'll have to, you'll have to know where they go. But they'll always go on some sort of C halogen type bond. When I talk about halogens, I'm talking about things in group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So who, who was asking me this? I'm sorry, I didn't see Savannah. who. I'm sorry. Savannah. Oh, Savannah. Savannah, um, is this a concept you've never seen before? I just, just so I know. It, it was one, I just don't remember. And right. now we explained it, it was fine. Okay, all right. Uh, the only reason I ask is I'm, I'm sure if, if you were having an issue with it, other people might be as well. So that's the only thing. Does anybody else have any any problems with it because you know I'm, I really am willing to spend as much time as is required to to get this uh, to get this concept explained about the uh, about the polarity the bond polarity so just to make sure it's going to be a partial um, negative charge if it's closer to fluorine that's right okay and then positive yeah, was, would be the other yeah, one yeah so whatever is most electronegative will always get the delta minus okay okay Thank you. So if we look at the reasoning here, which anion is more stable and why? A minus is more stable because delta plus is closer to the O minus. It's not enough for you to say that F is closer to the O minus. I mean, that's, that's, how what, that's what people will want to say. But if you're saying that, you're not explaining it well enough. The F is actually causing something. It's causing the delta plus. That's what's doing the stabilizing, not the F in and of itself. It's the fact the F is producing the delta plus. That's why it's so important to include the delta pluses in the explanations. What I find is that students are very adverse to actually showing the delta pluses. For some people, I feel like it's against their religion or something, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's just a, a real not wanting to show delta pluses and delta minuses and I'm not sure exactly why. Does anybody have any questions about the stability here? Yeah, I I have a question about the deltas. Mm -hmm. So it's del so flu the fluorine is delta minus because it's more electronegative than carbon, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So say that it was instead of it being F, it was something that was less electronegative than carbon, that would be the plus? Yeah, but it's, that's very unlikely. I mean, in the examples okay. we're talking about, it's always going to be a carbon halogen bond. And if that's sure. the case, then it'll always be the case that um, the halogen will be more electronegative than the, than the carbon. Okay, so it's usually the fluorine or any element in that place would be the delta negative and the carbon would be the delta plus? Not usually, always, Alexandra. I'll be more absolute okay. than that, okay? Okay. So then there shouldn't be any doubt or any confusion about that, okay? Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay.
in the next one, you can see the difference. It's not a difference in distance here. It's a difference in the kind of atom attached to the C that is adjacent to the C double bond O OH grouping. So again, we can take the same we can take the same tack here. And we can express this in the same way with the delta plus here. Now understand the delta plus is actually on this point here, which is a carbon atom. That's where the delta plus is being drawn. So we've got F and we've got BR minus here. So what I can say about the CF bonds and versus the CBR bond is I can say this. So in the case of CF, we know that F is more electronegative than bromine. So when we're talking about the CF bond, we might draw the electrons there in the CF bond. In the case of the CBR bond, I might draw them here. So in each instance, they're closer to the electronegative atom. And maybe I could be a little bit more obvious with the bromine here. And I could probably even make that bond longer as well. There we go. That's better. BR is a bigger atom. So you're expecting a, a longer bond anyway. But the point is that this has a pretty big delta plus on it. Sorry, delta minus. Which means that the C is going to have an equally large delta plus on it. Let me draw it a little bit better. In the case of the bromine, it's delta minus. In the case of the C, it's delta plus. Does anybody have any any questions so far? So my argument here is that the delta plus on the C from the F is greater than the delta plus on the C from the BR. And that's because the electronegativity of fluorine is greater than the electronegativity of bromine. Overall, the electrons and I, I got a question, Professor. Yeah. Um, are you getting the chart? You getting the charges from the periodic table, right? For every problem, correct? I'm not understanding that question exactly. So, like, um, for the deltas, like uh, the charges, are you mm -hmm. getting those directly from the periodic table? Well, I'm ba basing it on the electronegativities, and and just sort of saying, well, if one is more electronegative than the other, the electrons are going to be closer to that element than the other element. Okay. I'm not, not sure I can say it any differently than that, but if I can explain it better, you know, if you're not sure on that, you, you know, see if you can ask another question that would help. No, that pretty much, that helped it. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? All right, so if we look at the the anions then, it says state which anion is more stable and why. A minus is more stable because F is more electronegative than bromine. This means that the bigger delta minus leads to a bigger delta plus, which gives better stabilization of the anion. So that's a full explanation there because we can't, we can't say that A minus, if we can't just say it's because F is more stable Oh, sorry, F is more electronegative than bromine. That's not that's not a good enough reason. We have to go a bit deeper and look into the effect that the difference in electronegativity has on the size of the delta plus. The distance doesn't matter in this case because they're the same distance. But what does matter is the relative size of the delta pluses that we're getting 
on each of those carbons. Does anybody have any questions? At the end then we can write a statement that links anion stability to acidity and we can say A minus is more stable than B minus therefore AH is more acidic than BH. All right, does anybody have any questions? The last one here has to do with the sheer number of electronegative atoms attached to the same carbon, excuse me, in the same position. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at that. So again, we're going to be comparing the anions. You can see that in the case of the one that has two fluorines on it, it's not difficult to imagine that the carbon connected to those two fluorines would have a greater delta plus charge. I'm positing that it's going to be double pretty much what you're seeing of the first one. And that's because there's two fluorines is going to have a, a bigger effect on the delta plus than one fluorine. Does anybody have any questions? So again, in this instance, A minus is more stable because F attached to C, more F attached to C gives bigger delta plus, which gives better stabilization of the anion. So again, the delta plus has to be mentioned in the explanation as well. And it's giving a bigger delta plus because there's more fluorines connected. And then A minus is more stable than B minus, therefore AH is more acidic than BH. So again, we're looking at the relative, we're looking at the relative stability of the anions before we talk about the relative acidity of the two compounds that are producing those anions. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right, let me, let me just summarize what we just talked about. There's four scenarios we talk about. The first one is And this is, this is important, electronegativity. So I'm going to use E apostrophe TY to denote electronegativity or to abbreviate that. Electronegativity of element carrying negative charge. And minus VE means negative, just in case you've never seen it before. So X minus versus Y minus. Scenario two is distance of a delta plus from X minus three bigger delta plus from
more electronegative group attached to C. And four, bigger delta plus due to more, I mean, let's not use the word more, use due to greater number, we'll use that instead and we make it a little bit clearer greater number of electronegative group attached to C. So those are the, those are the four basic scenarios. Now, these three here, two, three, and four, need to be explained with delta plus, need to have delta plus in their explanation. One doesn't, because there is nothing to do with delta plus or delta minus. Needs to involve, uh, two, three, and four, need to involve delta plus in explanations. All right, does anybody have any questions? All right, so what we can look at now is some examples and well, I can show you what it looks like since I've got the test up here. I'll show you what it looks like on the test. So this is an example of a test question. Uh, this is fall 2018, I think. And you can get an idea of, of what you'll need to do. I'm going to go ahead and bring up another page here. Here we go. I do have one already. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So what do you have to do with this kind of question? Well, the first thing, look at the look at what the question's asking for. It says, draw reactions showing how the compounds split into anion and H+. Point out which anion's more stable and why it's more stable. And then write a statement that links anion stability to acidity of the compound. So this is pretty much the process that you'll use when you're doing similar problems. But you know, obviously, it'll look a bit different on the test you're taking. But um, it's probably the same concepts. So the line there is an I, by the way. It doesn't look like an I, but it's an I. Sorry, somebody's asking a question in chat. I just want to see what it is. Oh, that's fine. You don't have to ask to be excused. So look at the pattern here for how we know what's going to happen. We always lose one H and whatever, wherever the H plus 
was, that's what gains a negative charge. That's what's happening here. And that's a CL, by the way. So in the case of these, I'll call this AH, I'll call this one BH, I'll call this A minus, I'll call this B minus. And I know that B minus is more stable. Can anybody tell me which scenario of the three we're dealing with? Because CL is more electronegative than I. Can you tell me which number scenario we're talking about out of one, two, three, or four? I've got them here. Three. Yeah, three. Bigger delta plus, more electronegative group attached to C. That's correct. Thank you. So B minus is more stable because CL gives bigger delta plus. than I. CL more electronegative than I. So I think those are the important, those are the important points. CL is more electronegative than I and that's why CL gives a bigger delta plus than I does. I think those are, those are the two most important points about about that kind of scenario. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. So what that means is that since uh, B minus is more stable than A minus, BH is more acidic than AH. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Let's take a look at some um, resources I have here to help you out with this. Here we go. So we're looking at the relative acidity, relative acid strength folder here. And I've got two PDF files here that go into this. All right, so what I'd like to do is just not so much focus on the problems themselves, but more about which scenario is in play with each of these examples here. All right, let's look at example one. What scenario do you think is in play with example one? One, two, three, or four. Well, maybe I should do this as a poll. I might do this as a poll.
Okay. All right, so tell me which scenario you think is in play with the first example. I'm just going to come back to that. Okay, so number one. Which scenario do you think is in play? Okay, I'll give you 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, not everybody's responding here, but uh, there you go. I'm going to share the results here. So the answer is number one. So let me explain why it's number one. It's because when you look at the anions, and that's the that's really the key here, you look at the anions. Yes, the anions. The anions are going to be O negative versus NH negative. And again, it's from taking the it's from taking the hydrogen off the uh, taking the hydrogen away from the uh, oxygen and nitrogen there. So you can see that the atoms being dealt with are O minus and N minus, which makes it scenario one that we're dealing with. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I'm going to skip over number two here. It, it really is, it's kind of a mixture of two and I'm not really going to go into that. It could be either really, number two could be either scenario four or even possibly scenario three if we're comparing the electronegativity of Cl to H. So I don't really want to make a comparison there for number two, but let's look at number three. Which one do you think, which scenario do you think is in play for number three? I'm going to bring up the, the poll again here. Relaunch it. Okay. So which scenario do you think is in play for number, number three? 10, 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So the scenario in play is actually the is is actually number two, the distance of delta plus from the x minus. And that's because when we draw the stop sharing here. This is because when we draw the two anions, you can see that the F's are in different places on the chain. And so you can see it's all about distance. Does anybody have any questions about uh, number number three? Okay. Let's look at uh, number four. Okay, number four, I'm going to relaunch those. Okay, so number four, let me pull this down here. Which scenario do you think is at play with number four? Okay, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, 
five, four, three, two, one. Mm, this one wasn't so great. Okay, so there's the results. The answer was number one. So only four people got that right. The reasoning here, again, comes back to what we do with the anions here and what they look like. This is for number four. So the anions, you know, once you remove, and this is what I think a lot of you aren't doing, is removing the H to see what you have left. So you'll have CH2 minus. versus O minus. Does anybody have any questions? That's why it's scenario number one, because C negative and O negative are what is being compared. Does anybody have any questions? So basically we just like ignore that as the fluorine. Around. Well, the thing is, if you look at it, they both have three fluorines. So that can't be the reason that one is more acidic than the other, right? Okay, so if they balance each other out, you can just ignore it. Yeah, because there's only ever one scenario at play. I'm never going to combine scenarios. Okay. Right? I'm never going to, for example, put have F here and put a BR or something on this one. Right? That would be mixing scenarios. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's continue on with this. And uh, I've got another, I've got another set of problems here, supplementary acidity problems. Let's look at these. One we've already done. Okay. So let's look at number two here. And again, I'll, I'll bring up the poll if I can find it. I didn't mean to do that, sorry. To move some things around a bit here. Okay. Um, relaunch, I guess. I never shared the results on that one, I suppose. All right. So number two, the one we're looking at, which scenario are we dealing with here in number two? Okay, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so if you look at the results here, it is number two that is the scenario because when you take off the H, we're left with O minus and the positioning of the F is what the difference is. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, let's look at scenarios, sorry, number three. Which scenario is at play in number three? Let me move the pole here. If I can. There we go. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer is scenario four for number three, because we have a greater number. We have a greater number of electronegative groups attached to the C. You've got two Fs versus one F over here. Anybody have any questions?
Okay, so um, let's have a look at number uh, number four. What scenario is in play with number four? Five, four, three, two, one. And it is scenario three that's in play because we have O negative, O negative, but now we have BR and F. And that's what I mean by electronegativity of the element carrying the negative charge the O negative and O negative here, that's the difference. In this scenario, the top scenario, O negative and N negative, that would be scenario one. But O negative, O negative versus B, R and F, that's the, that's what we're looking at there. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Now this one's interesting. This is number five. Which scenario is in play for number five? Which scenario is in play for number five? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And it is actually scenario three. And the reason is, look at what's, look what we get for the anion, CH2 minus CH2 minus. And then we have three Fs and three CLs. So it's got nothing to do with the numbers of each of those. In fact, they're the same means it hasn't got anything to do with the number of them. What it does have to do with is the different electronegativity of F versus CL. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Now take a look at, yeah, sorry, number six. Number six, which scenario is in play with number six? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, so uh, number six, we've got NH minus NH minus as being the anions. So it's not scenario one, which is good nobody put that. We got two Fs and two Fs. So it's got nothing to do with the relative numbers because not one doesn't have more than the other. So it has to do with distance, the two Fs versus where the two Fs are in each case. So it'd be number two. Any questions? All right, take a look at, I have to relaunch this. Okay, so take a look at number seven. Which scenario do you think is in play for number seven? Ten nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So in this one, it's NH minus and NH minus. So it's not scenario one. 
it is scenario three because you've got the two Fs versus the two BRs. So the number isn't mat doesn't number of each of those doesn't matter. In fact, it's F versus BR is what matters. All right, so it seems like some of you have gotten the idea of what's going on here, but there's a number of you who haven't yet. And you know, you, you're going to have to uh, you're going to have to sort that out. We'll see if we can hopefully get you to the point of understanding it as we go through some of these other questions. Okay, let's look at the kinds of questions you're going to see on the test that reason that are relate to all this. Okay, so the first the first question here gives you two compounds and asks which compound is less acidic. And you would you would base this on the structures here, and you, you could see that the one that's less acidic will be the one without the chlorine. It's effectively the hydrogen versus the chlorine here that's the reason. And Cl is a whole lot more electronegative than H is, so that would have a bigger delta plus on it, which means that would stabilize the anion better. So the answer here would be less acidic would be this one the one with the hydrogen on it. Does anybody have any questions? Which compound has the more stable anion? So you'd look at these, this would be O negative versus N negative. The more stable one would be this one. The anion is what is being asked about. So you have to be able to do that in your mind or do it on a sheet of paper, take off the hydrogen and see what you're left with in each case. I think that's really good advice for any of these questions. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. The reason one of these anions of these compounds is more stable than the other is, so these are these, again, the four scenarios, the ones I have over here. This scenario is, well, let's, uh, let's do a poll here. Let's make sure you can interpret what's going on. Okay. So which scenario is, are we actually dealing with, with there is a greater number of electronegative atoms attached at a given point on the anion? Ten, nine, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. A lot of people didn't answer this one. Does anybody want to share why they didn't answer it? Can anybody share why they didn't answer it? I mean, I, I see there's 20 people on the call and only nine people have, only nine people have offered a response. Can, does somebody want to share why they're not responding? Let me see if there's a, anybody on the, anybody who's not actually on the call. No, no, you all seem to be here. So can somebody tell me why they're not responding? I'll end the poll here. The answer is number four. The greater number of electronegative atoms, bigger delta plus due to greater number of electronegative groups attached to C. 
Yeah, so that's that. That's what that is. Is it the worthy? Is it the wording, the verbiage? Can somebody give me some feedback here as to what the problem is? Okay. I did answer, but it took me a while to figure out what you were asking. Okay. The negative charge is on a different atom and one of those atoms is more electri electronegative than the other element. Okay, so which scenario are we talking about there? Hang on, I gotta, let me relaunch that, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna relaunch. Okay. Which scenario are we talking about here? The negative charge is on a different atom and one of those atoms is more electronegative than the other element. But look at the word, look at the words and what they mean here. I mean, really read it. The negative charge is on a different atom. The negative charge is on a different atom. Yes, we'll be given a periodic table to test. All right. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. The answer actually for that one is number one. Because what we're talking about here is X minus versus Y minus the negative charge is on a different atom. It wasn't talking about the delta minus, it's talking about the full negative charge. When I say negative charge, that's what I mean, the minus, not the delta minus. I think that might have been the point of confusion there. Um, let's see, what are we looking at? I can't move this, hang on, I'm trying to. Here we go. The point of attachment of an electronegative atom is closer to the negative charge in one of the anions. Which scenario are we dealing with there? Five, four, three, two, one. So the, the key word there is closeness or distance. So distance, closeness, that's why that's what we're getting for that one. There's only one left and that is an atom attached to the anion is more electronegative than an atom attached to another anion. That would be scenario three. So that's the only one we're dealing with there. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you interpret those. Does anybody have any questions? So for this one, it would be scenario one, I think. Hang on. Yeah, which would be the negative charge is on a different atom and one of those atoms is more electronegative than the other element. So it'll be, yeah, that's the reason. This one is more this one would be more acidic than this one for that reason. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Which is the correct statement that links acidity to anion stability? So you have to figure out which of these is more acidic and it would be B would be more acidic and B is more acidic because it has the more stable anion. So you have to find the wording that matches that. And I think for this one, let's see, so compound B, yeah, so it's not compound B is more stable than compound A.
it would be anion of B is more stable than anion of B. So compound B is more acidic than compound A. So that's what you would have to write down there. So you have to say it's the anion that's more stable that's producing the fact that um, the compound is more stable. So the compound is the compound you're given. The anion is the negative charge, that you, the compound with the negative charge that you're getting from that. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, so let, let me put in a plug here. I would say test two is probably the most difficult of all the tests that you'll do. There's a lot of material here that you're going to have to go through. And my recommendation is to be able to figure out each grouping of questions and do it kind of early on in the piece. So if this is something that you, you still haven't quite figured out yet, my recommendation would be to do these questions. See, Jiz, you, you do get the periodic table here. Question four, five, six, seven. Here, yeah, four through seven, and just do them again and again, but make sure you're understanding why you're getting the answers you're getting. And once you figure that out, then you know that you'll be able to to do it when you do the real test. And if you're having trouble with it, that's when you talk to me or you, you get the help of one of the tutors on tutor.com. So either me or a tutor can help you out with this if uh, you're having trouble with it. All right, any, any other questions about what we've gone through today? Dr. Musgrave? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lonnie. Um, do you know of, of any applications that we can uh, subscribe to that, that I guess will, uh, you know, um, that will help us to, um, I guess, learn the concept for lack of a better wording? You know what I mean? Like to, yeah, to, well, then what that you're will saying. Kind of walk us through it. Well, I don't like usually, I don't really like to, to uh, quote Dr. Phil, but I'm going to quote Dr. Phil here. 85% of questions are actually statements in disguise. And I feel like the statement you're trying to make, Lonnie, is you don't have sufficient resources in my courses in order to understand the material. That's what I'm hearing. So uh, I, I think maybe you, you're not really... Um, you're not really seeing that the kinds of resources that we have available here. So I'm going to go through those resources. If you're having trouble with the material, you've got resources in the shape of me and the tutors, the SPC tutors as well on, on tutor.com. But as far as the material goes, let's go take a look at that. And I think that's where this is where we're getting here. Uh, let me expand this out here. Okay. I'm not sure why this is why I'm losing part of the screen here, but we'll see in a second. Okay, so you've got like I said, the practice test, the ungraded copy of test two. Attached to that, you've got the you've got the questions here that can help you, the, the videos that can help you with those specific questions. That's one resource. You've also got videos here that I've that I go through, like this one here would be comparing acidities, question two. You could watch that video uh, to to help yourself with that concept a bit. You've also got in the actual relative acid strength folder, the two answer to uh, two problem sets that also have the answers with them, as well as these extra credit quizzes that can help you cement the concepts that we're talking about. So that's, uh, so that's, what, we're, that's what we're looking at. Plus the, plus of course the, the PowerPoint notes that I've been going through as well, Lonnie. Right. 
Thank you, Doc. All right. Does anybody have any other any other questions? Okay, well we'll leave it there and I will see you all next uh, next Tuesday. Have a good day. Thanks, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. All right, no worries.